Okay, so in these videos, I am going to demonstrate how to basically read and potentially send commands uh, on Canvas using an Arduino or similar type of microcontroller um, hooking into a Subaru ECU. So the end goal is to basically mimic what an access port can do and these, this is an access port. If uh, you're familiar with them, they basically let you reprogram the ECU and nice little features of them. They, they give you a lot of gauges that the regular computer isn't gonna give you. So you can read stuff like knock and timing and all sorts of cool stuff that regular OBD does not necessarily give you access to. So most of this stuff in this video is going to work regardless if you have an access point port or not. But in the grand scheme of things, if you have one of these right now, this video, you know, these videos should help you effectively not need to use it anymore. So I'm gonna, my end goal is to basically build a little controller that gives me gauges just like this thing would, and in the end, potentially do my own data logging onto an SD card and all that sorts of fun stuff, basically. But to start to do this, you need to basically be able to what's called sniff CAN bus data. And one of the things with a Subaru ECU is that you have a protocol called SSM, and that's called Subaru Select Monitor. And with that, you can actually read and write memory directly in the ECU. And I'll get into that in a separate video because it gets pretty complicated. But once you get the hang of it and once you know where the resources are, it actually becomes somewhat, somewhat simple, just time consuming, basically. So in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up into the CAN bus system. We're gonna prove that we can begin to sniff otherwise known as read data coming out of the ECU, just the raw ECU data that you can log on your computer and you can also read with an Arduino. And then we'll also demonstrate how to actually read the commands that the uh, access port are giving you. So, and basic, you know, that's basically to figure out what is it doing to give you the display so you can try and mimic it, reverse engineer your own protocols for it, et cetera, et cetera. So to do this, um, you need a couple of things, uh, not necessarily required, but definitely help. For starters, I bought a really long OBD extension cable. So this is plugged in down underneath the dash where the OBD port is. Plugged it into there and that ends right here. So this is just a basically a really long OBD2 cable. I have not had any issues with the length basically. So. This is the first half of it. And then the second half is I bought an OBD2 splitter cable, which is this half, and it ends in two basically OBD2 connectors. So that lets me run the access port and my microcontroller stuff at the same time. You know, these are super cheap, might as well get them. And then the kind of final piece of the cabling is you need a way to actually hook into the Arduino or your whatever your controller of choice is. So what I bought is a, basically you can get these on Amazon. There's tons of different options. You can get just a cable and just cut it. I bought one that was basically already split. So all these little wires were already coming out of it like this. And then I'll get into the pinout and stuff of it in a minute here. You can get one of these that has like a serial port at the end of it and you can use that, et cetera, et cetera. Long story short, all you need are two connectors coming off of it. You need the CAN high and low. I'm not gonna go into what CAN bus is or how it works, because frankly, you don't necessarily need to know that. You should understand how this stuff works so you know what you're getting yourself into, because uh, you can definitely get yourself in trouble here. But what we're gonna be doing is pretty safe, so just, uh, just don't be stupid. But so what I did was I bought this little pigtail here. I then went and looked up the Subaru OBD2 port output, mapped all the pins, 
did a bunch of stuff with a multimeter to figure out which wires were which, labeled the ones, you know, so I've got K-Line and all sorts of other crazy stuff in here. All we care about again is CAN bus, right? So there is another protocol, well, I don't know if I call it a protocol, another port, which is called K-Line, and that's basically a direct serial connection to the Subaru ECU, and you can do SSM communication with that, but we're not doing that. We're gonna do CAN bus because it's a lot faster and it works a lot better, simpler to use as it turns out. So I've mapped my CAN high and low to this cable here, which I have twisted. It's a good idea to twist it. It keeps interference out. And what I have is I basically got two end connectors right here. These are the CAN bus connectors for the car, basically. The next thing you're gonna need is how to connect it to your actual computer. So what I'm using is just a little couple dollar Arduino Nano. Use whatever you want for here. Basically, this is just an Arduino and it goes to this little guy, which is a CAN bus kind of converter, mod, I don't know, CAN bus, the serial, whatever you want to call it, right? This thing is called an MCP2515. You get these on Amazon also, basically. So you want to get one of these little guys and then you want to wire it up to the Arduino, basically as an SPI type of device. And then what you're going to do is you can see down in here, if this focuses, you can kind of see an L and an H in here. So that's high and low. So you can obviously connect the pins directly into these little clamps, but this little pin right here, right there, is where you're gonna connect the high and low from your uh, actual OBD2 CAN bus connector. So however you wanna get your CAN bus wires out there, you can, and we're gonna basically hook them into these two pins right there, and we're gonna hook them up into our laptop, and we're going to take a look at what type of data we're getting out of the uh, the CAN bus system. So when you've got all of this stuff ready, this wiring is out there. Uh, I'll try to post a picture of actually where it goes, but this is standard like Arduino stuff. There's nothing fancy about it. Uh, what we're gonna do now is I'll switch over to the laptop and I'll show you the software I'm using to actually parse this data and get stuff out of it. And then you can start dumping captures of it and kind of figuring out what you want to do from there try to reverse engineer some of the stuff as you'll see it it quickly gets very complicated but there are some resources that'll help you out so we'll switch over to the computer now all right so we got the computer here you're gonna need two programs you're gonna need the arduino controller program the basically the Arduino IDE. You can just get that from Google, wherever you want to find it. We also need a program called CAN Hacker, is what I'm going to use. I was not able to get Savvy CAN working. There's all sorts of ones you can use. We're going to use CAN Hacker for this, basically. It's good enough. You can get that from this website here. Here's, I'll put the link up there. You go here, you grab CAN Hacker, and you install it. So when you got those two programs running, you're gonna basically open up this uh, sketch, right? This Arduino program we got here. So I'll put that up as well, basically. So this is what's gonna send the data to the CAN hacker itself. So you're not gonna be using the Arduino to actually interface like directly. You're gonna have it pass through to CAN hacker. So we need a couple of libraries though to make this work. So they have to be installed manually, sadly. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna look for the first one, which is the auto WP Arduino CAN hacker library. We're going to download this as a file. You're also then, if you look at the instructions here, it says you need this MCP2515 library as well. We're gonna go here. And this is basically the auto WP, the same one. We're going to download that as well. So you got the two library files you need. You go back to the Arduino program, you go to sketch. We're going to add a zip library from include. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to downloads and you're going to basically add these files. So I've already done this once and I'm just gonna show you do it again. So you basically, you know, here's the can hacker one. We're gonna add it, I'm gonna override it, yes. That one was a success. 
We're going to go back to include zip downloads. We're going to do the MCP one. We're going to do yes. So those two libraries are now basically sitting near like my documents file. And when you compile, you do a verify, it compiles successfully, right? So that means the libraries are there. Everything's cool. So the one thing to note is that this is probably not going to work by default. If you run it right now, you won't get any data. What you have to do is you have to look at your MCP thing and right here on this little guy right there, if you look at it, there's going to be a number. There's going to be a number on there. That is the speed of this device. So the one we're using for this test is got an eight written on it. That means it runs at eight megahertz. You can get ones that run at 16, which is what a lot of these libraries are expecting. But make sure you look at that number because what you have to do is if it is an eight, you have to do what this next step is basically. So mine is an eight. So I have to change this code to understand that it's an eight for what we want to do with can hacker. So we go down to your file explorer. You go to documents, you go to Arduino libraries. Here are the two files that we basically imported. You want to go to the can hacker one. You want to open canhacker.h in notepad or whatever you want to use it for. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see right here, can clock. This is basically what the MCP chip is going to run at. It's set at 16. You want to change that to an eight. If you don't do this and you set all this stuff up, you'll basically not get any data back and you'll try to figure out what the heck is going on. Mm -hmm. So leave this added, put this at an eight, save the file and close it, and then push this to the device. And it helps if you plug it in first. So I plugged it in this time, I pushed it, and in a second here, it'll be done. Make sure you do not do the serial monitor. You do not want to open a serial monitor. Make sure that's, if it's open here, close it basically. Otherwise it'll interfere. Now with that done, we can connect our CAN bus wires here. So remember my yellow is low, my white is high. There's an L and an H down here. So I'm going to take this and I am going to plug it in like that. So there's my low and my high. So everything is connected, but there's no data coming through because frankly, because the car is not on, right? So open up CAN bus or CAN hacker, I mean. Uh, we'll switch back to the laptop probably by now. You want to go into settings. You want to choose the COM port that your Arduino is on. You want to change your baud rate to 115200. That's basically the Arduino serial connection. And for what we're talking about here, you want to change the CAN to 500 because that's what the Subaru is talking. So leave all these how they are. Listen only should be unchecked. You can leave the timestamp on, who cares? So make sure these are correct. We're going to click OK. We're going to click Connect. And what you'll see at the bottom, it'll be talking, trying to interface. We're connected at 500, but we still have no data. That's because the car isn't on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the ignition to on, turn the battery on in the car and we will start seeing data. So, as you can see, it starts pumping data pretty quick. You know, the count is how many packets it's received. Period is the delay between it. Obviously, some things talk more than others, but what you have here is you have your ID, which is basically what is sending the info, and then your data, which is effectively just pure bytes. And in some cases, it's down to the straight up bit level basically. So when everyone talks about CAN bus hacking and stuff, they just say, start doing these captures and do things and see what changes. Honestly, I don't know why people say that because if you look at this, it is just a near constant stream of data. So if I like turned the headlights on, the odds of me capturing it or knowing what I'm seeing in this field of data is just ridiculous. It, it's almost impossible unless you start looking up CAN bus IDs and stuff like that. But you know, you can kind of drill into this stuff. It'll kind of give you a little bit more info. You can come up here. 
and you can view the details and it'll actually show you like the the pure data that's being sent back and forth and stuff like that. Um, again, if you know exactly what you're looking for, this will make sense. Otherwise, it's just way too much information to digest. For example, like the 600 and 601, these are standard IDs. I can get my steering wheel position and stuff like that from this. So this screen, it's nice for just a high level, but again, way too much stuff coming across here for you to figure out. In reality, what you probably want to do is you want to look at this list. Whoops, that's not it. You want to click that button right there and you can click record and this will actually just straight up give you a dump of the raw data you're getting in that you're being captured. So lots of stuff going on here. You can let this record, you can do stuff. And then, you know, what you do is you do a pause and you can go up to file and you can save the trace and you can just save it as a trace.trc. And if you come back into your documents folder, here it is. You can open this with notepad. You can open this into Excel, you know, and start filtering stuff. These are just the raw packets you grabbed. And you can start doing some analysis work on these and trying to decode what this stuff means, basically. You can do the same thing with this side right here. You can actually save the, you want to save the RX list because you're receiving data, not sending it. That was uh, stupid of me. You can save it. And then if you open it up, you basically just get like a snapshot of what you've got here. So with this, you can drive around the car with the laptop on the seat and stuff like that. And you can actually start getting information. Um, this stuff down here lets you send data, but we're not going to do that. I'm not sending data from this thing. There's no need to right now. Right now we're pure analysis mode. We're sniffing CAN bus and stuff like that and seeing what can happen of it basically. So yeah, this is how you get data off of the CAN bus, basically CAN hacker itself. So the second thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on the access port. So I basically push the, the button. It's firing up. You see it sit and right there. It's lo it's loaded the gauges, right? So, what you're going to see, we'll just switch back to the computer here, is that some new fields have shown up, 7E0 and E8. These are what the access port uses to talk. 7E0 is the access port sending requests for information back, basically gauges. 7E8 are the responses from the ECU. So that is SSM communication right there and we will get into it in another video about how to actually decode this data but basically this is what you're seeing when you're actually doing access port data logging effectively is you're getting these two fields right here